Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Linda, and today we are gonna be talking about a case that's all over the news right now. Her name is Alexis Sharkey. She's a 26-year-old woman from Houston, Texas, who was recently found deceased on the side of a road. There's been a lot of coverage surrounding her case, so we're gonna get into it. But before we do, if you'd like to be part of the It's a Crime community, please click that subscribe button below, hit that notification bell to all. Please share this video where you can and give it a like. Now. Let's get into it. Alexis Sharkey, 26, was living in Houston, Texas with her 49-year-old husband, Tom Sharkey. The couple were married last December and it was upcoming on their one-year anniversary. They moved to Houston in January. On Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 26th, Alexis, or Lexi as her friends like to call her, went to her friend's house to celebrate Thanksgiving and Tom wasn't with her there. This picture here was taken on Thanksgiving Day. The next day, on Friday, November 27th, was the last time her friends ever heard from her ever again. Now, Alexis's whole life was on social media and Instagram, and she actually posted quite often. She had a network marketing business and also promoted other beauty products. Her phone was her lifeline in her business. She's been called a social media influencer, but her sister said she actually hated the word influencer. She would rather be called a businesswoman. Her sister says she actually hated that word. She wasn't an influencer. She wasn't trying to influence anything. She was a smart, savvy, successful businesswoman. That's how I want everyone to remember her. And when it came to her responding on her phone, one of her best friends said that Alexis would always respond and she'd be the first one to respond in a group chat even. But Friday night, there was no response. And the friends had already made plans with Alexis on Saturday to watch movies. The friends got worried when there was no response from Alexis and her friend Tanya went over to Alexis and Tom's apartment to check on her and there was no answer. It was said that both Tanya and Tom phoned Alexis's mother to let her know that they haven't heard from her. That Friday night, as I said, was the last anyone has heard from her. Now on Saturday, November 28th, Alexis was found deceased and naked on the side of the road. It was in the 1000 block of Red Haw Lane of Houston, Texas, and she was found by city workers. It was said that they found feet sticking out from the bushes and then they called authorities. There are a few things to note. Homicide detective Ricardo Rivera, who's been handling the case, said there wasn't any attempt to conceal her body based on how she was positioned. He said there's also no evidence that she walked down the I-10. Now, a woman named Jennifer Shen, who is a forensic expert, said someone went to the effort of dumping the body, but they didn't go to the effort of hiding the body particularly very well. And she talked about when they see bodies being dumped, that this is something common that Maybe a person has overdosed or taken by someone else or something in that nature. She said she has no reason to believe at this point that there's drugs involved or anything like that. But she did say uh, this person, whoever or people that dumped Alexis said there was no effort really in hiding the body. Now the location where she was found was only three to four minutes away from her apartment. So it's not very long. And someone was saying that it was actually eight miles. Now, as I mentioned, Alexis was found naked and there were no visible signs of death. The autopsy results are still pending. I will update you when I find out that news. Now, Alexis's friends also said that it wouldn't be like her to walk. They said she would most likely drive or take an Uber, so that caught my attention. And her friend said she would have called us or got an Uber. She wouldn't have walked anywhere. Now, also, I saw in one news report that there were cameras surrounding that area and they did spot a video on surveillance. The question right now is whose vehicle was it and who was driving it? Now, let's talk about Lexi's mom, Stacy. The last time they talked, she said they were planning Christmas in Pennsylvania. She said, we haven't seen her since last Christmas and that's the longest we've ever gone. We were desperate to see her and excited to see her. And Alexis is the oldest of three sisters and she grew up in Northwestern Pennsylvania. She graduated with a biology degree and planned to apply to medical school. Her mom said then she took a year off and that year knocked her into a different path, which happens. Alexis moved to West Texas where she met her husband, Tom Sharkey. 
they got married and she went full-time into her business. They moved to Houston in January. Her mom said she loved what she did. She had been working with an online company was selling all health-based hair care and body care products. And Alexis's mom got the call Saturday night about Alexis being missing and her disappearance was reported to the Houston police. She said, one friend said, I ran over to her apartment and she's not there and we were supposed to meet up. When you start to hear these stories and you just know that it's not right, something's wrong, she's never that far away from her device, she's standing up her friends, her husband doesn't know where she is, all of that, all of that strikes fear. She says, we are wrecked, we are completely wrecked. The family is just so devastated. Her cousins, her sisters, her 13-year-old sister, it's just so difficult. She goes on to say, the way in which she was found, my child would never do that to herself. That doesn't even make sense. This is absolutely foul play. She says, there is nothing to me that suggests that this was an accident and there's nothing to me that suggests anything else other than that this was done to her and I believe that in my mother's gut. And Alexis's friends are speaking out as well. One of her best friends, Tanya, talked about how they made plans to watch movies with other friends all day on Saturday. She said the last time they spoke was around 6 p.m. She got worried when text messages and phone calls went unanswered. She said she is attached to her phone. She's a social media queen. She is an influencer. She works from her phone. It was said that they got more worried when 12 hours went by and there was no posts on her social media, which is not like her. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, they went over to the apartment and there was no answer. They said, after we hadn't heard anything from her on Saturday, we were worried, so we went to the apartment at about 12.30 p.m. They had a ring doorbell, but nobody answered. We sat outside and waited for hours. She goes on to say she was always happy, always had a smile on her face. A lot of people looked up to her. She was just very, very positive. I don't know who could have done something like this to her. And Tanya went on to talk about Alexis being found and she said, I mean, they just threw her on the side of the road naked like garbage. I just, I don't get it. No one gets away with something like this. No one. She said her and her friends aren't going to let this go. She said, whoever did this, we're going to find them. We're going to do everything it takes so everyone can put her to rest in peace. And there were a few alarming comments about Alexis' marriage to Tom Sharkey. Tanya said the couple had issues. She said recently she opened up to us about it and divorce was being filed. She was a very private person. She didn't share a lot about what was going on at home. Another friend had said Alexis confided in her about a month ago in Marfa, Texas. She said that Tom had been putting hands on her. She says one night when she and I were talking alone, she said he strangles me and chokes me out and I black out and wake up on the bathroom floor every single time. That, that's very bizarre where she was talking about waking up on the bathroom every single time. I find that odd. Um, throughout the trip, she says he was sending really awful, nasty messages to her. And two other friends also said Alexis complained that her husband hit her and was controlling and manipulative. The friend said that Alex was petrified and she was scared for her life. Now let's talk about her husband, Tom Sharkey. From what I understand, they've been together for a few years. They lived in Grand Junction, Colorado for four months in 2019, and then they moved to Houston in January. Detective Rivera said that officers has spoken to Tom and he has continued to be cooperative. Now on a Facebook post, he posted my world, my everything, I'm so lost right now, my one and only with pictures of Alexis. And I do wanna point out something that's very curious to me. It's a picture that I saw of her and Tom in on Facebook. It was of Alexis in her wedding dress in the store and right be behind her is her husband. It just caught my attention. You don't see this too often where a fiance is at the store, where a bride is shopping for her wedding dress. It's something that women dream of, most women dream of all their lives. And so usually it's made a surprise. So I found it quite curious about this picture. I thought, huh, that's really interesting where he's there and and not just there, he looks like he's quite involved in the process. I'm not saying it doesn't ever happen, but I just find that picture very curious. It's something that doesn't happen very often, in my opinion. 
And since this story has hit the news, Tom is saying that he's receiving threatening death threats. I have actually witnessed those as well. I've seen the death threats on his profile. Tom says, it's horrible. People are talking tons of crap. I'm getting death threats and stuff. None of that bothers me. What bothers me is that the world and everybody in it focuses on all the stuff that doesn't matter. Should have been focused on finding my wife. Tom added, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not a jerk, I'm just destroyed. And there was mention in reports that Alexis and Tom had a fight Friday before she disappeared, but in an interview with Tom, he disputed that. He said, we didn't fight when she left. And that he said he just told her she couldn't drive under the influence. She left anyhow, this is where we're at. Now, side note, the one part where he said we didn't fight when she left tells me that they did fight, just not the exact moment when she walked out of the door. Otherwise, he would have said we didn't fight, but he says we didn't fight when she left. And there's obviously a few things that doesn't fit in this story, right? I mean, she was found naked. I don't think that she would just walk out the door naked and, you know, walk eight miles to the location she was found. So that's a huge missing link right there. And according to her friends, she wouldn't walk. She would either drive or take an Uber. So the Uber actually uh, has me questioning, did she take an Uber? And what was Tom doing the night she disappeared? Now, he did respond to other reports about Alexis being happy. He said that she wasn't happy and she was stressed. He says, she wasn't happy, she was stressed. I would cuddle her to try to make her strong. She was an amazing woman. Sir, my wife was an amazing woman. She really was. There's always other sides to everything. I was the one holding her, cuddling her, and building her back up. I don't need to set the record straight. I'll let it play out the way it is. I know what my life was with my wife. And Tom even said since the death of his wife, he has been cooperating with authorities and has turned over all their messages, emails, and phone calls. In the interview, he was also saying that he assisted authorities in making phone calls to find out what happened to my wife. And I did see one of the reporters talk about an interview with Tom, and he did say that the conversation seemed disjointed and that Tom was angry as well. And Tom expressed confidence in the Houston Police Department and he said he's going to find everyone that was involved. Now, Alexis's autopsy is still pending. Like I mentioned, I will be giving you an update. I'm curious to see if she did have alcohol levels or some sort of levels in her toxicology report as Tom had said she left under the influence. But one thing for sure, there's nothing natural about ending up in a bush naked and dead. So let's see how this all unfolds. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know what you also think about that picture. I find it curious. I'm not saying that Tom Sharkey is involved. I'm not saying he isn't involved. I'm just curious about this picture. I find it very different and unique and would love to have a conversation about it. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. And her friend, that's my stomach growling.